Yeah, I know. I just feel like I'm beating a dead horse sometimes when I speak on certain things. But I got to. Got to. Um, you know, I see a lot of people out there, prophets, prophetess, people carrying those titles uh, or mimicking the office. And what I uh, don't see is... Um, I don't see the spirit of the Lord, the manifestation of the presence of the Lord. Because anybody who claims to be a prophetess, a prophet, or a, an apostle, or a prophetic person, you, um, will have the anointing of the presence of the Lord flowing through that ministry very tangibly. People will know it. You know what I'm saying? Um, because you have to understand something. That Jesus, when he was physically here, he was very tangible to his people. And, you know, they they wave palm branches, shouting Hosanna in the highest because they understood the scriptures. They knew who he was. They were in the River Jordan being baptized, preparing. People knew, you know, understood the scriptures in the Old Testament. Jesus was very tangible to the people, okay? They knew whether or not there was a prophet in their midst or not. Like, they, they really knew, okay? We know that these men were apostles and prophets, and only one of them really claimed the office, only to magnify the office, basically, which is the Apostle Paul, to magnify the, you know, the person of Jesus, because Jesus is the apostle. Jesus is the prophet. He's a pastor. He's a teacher. He's an evangelist. Jesus is in the volume of a 30-year-old mature man, Christ Jesus, that we are to be laboring to come into that person, Okay. I just see a lot of prophets out there, people claiming to be prophets, and they're very much called and have the gift of the prophet, but they do not have the glory or are they mentored with the character and the presence of the Lord with their gift, okay? They're prophesying, they're saying all kinds of good sounding things, it's your season, it's your time, you know, it's your, they're, they're, they're saying good nuggets, they're putting a lot of good nuggets that they put out there, and, um... You know, they're saying uh, a lot of spiritual principles, too. And, Hit that like button! Uh, Subscribe! Yeah, they're putting out a lot of good spiritual principles, a lot of good knowledge, a lot of good common things, you know, things that we know. Anybody can do that outside of the presence of the Lord. Anybody could repeat what they heard from someone else. There are a lot of parrots in the, you know, a lot of parakeets. You know, a parrot can, can, you know, can hear something and mimic it. Um, but a prophet will have the expression of the Lord speaking in him and through him. When, when that spirit comes upon him, he becomes another man. Okay? And, um... Okay, in the book of uh, uh, Second First Samuel chapter ten verse six in the in the King James it says, "And the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man." That's uh, found in Second uh, Number First Samuel, First Samuel chapter ten verse six. Okay, uh, this is the same principle even with Jesus. You know, Jesus claimed that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. To preach the gospel okay um, what am I saying you know and we say we're in the spirit a lot of times because some of you are listening some of you apostles and prophets who are claiming these offices who aren't there yet in that tabernacle of his presence okay oh Jesus I'm getting expressions right now I'm here and I'm seeing things from that realm right now that I didn't plan on saying See, what I'm saying is that I'm not saying you can't flow like this, but here's what I question about their ministry, okay? This is what I question about the ministry. They have no, no doctrine, no sound doctrine. They have no depth, okay? Um, they have no meat of the Word of God where they can get in the Scriptures with the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost can say, boop, there it is, boop, there it is, next verse, next word, next verse, next word, and you feel the wind of the Spirit coming off of that gentleman or that woman's mouth, okay? Because I very much believe that a woman is a prophetess because that's what the Scriptures teach. Thank you. 
So you should become another man, okay? Turned into another man. In other words, the spirit will come upon you and you'll start getting revelations or an expression will come about in the way you haven't seen it. And people can obviously, the gifts are without repentance. People have a knowledge of the scriptures because they have a gift. You have people that memorize scriptures, people that can really preach scriptures. They can be shifty in their own spirit with scriptures. I like that. I admire that because the gifts of the spirit are about repentance, okay? But the gifts of the spirit, when it comes to that realm, is you can never lose that gift. Because the Bible says that many in the last days shall fall away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They are listening to people who are preaching demonic doctrines. So they still have the gift, the receiver to receive from the satellite Jesus, but that gift is now receiving from another satellite a demonic doctrine. They departed by hearing and you know, they departed from the hearing of the word of Jesus from the from the throne of God. Because a prophet's ministry, an apostle or a prophet or a prophetic person's ministry is in connection with the throne room, okay? He's like John the Revelator, listening to the elders and those in heaven getting revelations, come up hither and I will show thee things which must shortly come to, come to pass. I will show thee things which must take place here and then after, you know? Uh, the prophet is, in fact, I didn't plan on going here. I want to go to the book of Revelation real quick. Let me open up my Bible here. Um, in fact, uh, let me um, do something real quick here. I'm going to turn on my uh, screen capture on my screen so you can see this. Um, I want to show you something because I didn't have this on my notes. The very thing I'm telling you about is actually manifesting right now. The example, which be of Jesus. Here's Jesus. Here, here's the prophet Jesus. Here's the apostle Jesus. I'm showing him. I'm showing him to you. He's here. Okay. Can you hear him speaking? So, what you have here in Revelation chapter, now those of you that follow my ministry, you know how I break down the book of Revelation, you see the gift. I don't have to, you don't have to wonder whether or not there's a, a prophet in your midst, okay? I don't have to claim it. So, right here, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but uh, let me to... I'm hearing something in the spirit. So this is John the Revelator. After dealing with the seven churches that are in Asia, which I'm going to preach on that very soon here, hopefully. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show thee things which must be here after. I believe that's in reference to here during the seals and after. Okay, there's still things to take place here after the seven churches of Asia. So this isn't in reference to after the church age. Just because seven happens to be the number of completion, because I, I, I might get into that another time. But my point is this, is that he says, come up hither and I will show thee things which, uh, you know, he said he heard a voice as a sound of a trumpet. Okay, if you remember in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah claims that, um, uh, oh, that's my trip there. I got to come back to that a little bit later. Okay, I got a trip here. Sorry about that. But Isaiah claims, the, the, uh, the, the Spirit is speaking to Isaiah the same way. Uh, lift up thy voice, sound thy, uh, lift up thy voice, sound, sound the alarm as the voice of a trumpet. Show my, my, my people their sins, the house of Judah, says in Isaiah. So it doesn't mean that it's the day of the trumpet, that the, the trumpet is blown or anything like that. I believe that's a false teaching. Uh, those of you that know how I break down Revelations uh, 4, 5, 6, and 7, you understand where I'm coming from with this. But my point is this, is that, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be here after. I believe this is the watchtower. Those of you that heard my teaching on uh, God's vineyard, that there in his vineyard that there is a, wa a watchtower in the midst of it, okay? I will wait in the watchtower to see what the Lord will say. Be still, know that I'm God, right? So the thing is that he is sitting in this watchtower, and he is seeking the Lord, and, okay, and what happens is... Um, He's, the Lord, is, he's given him, this is a model for us prophets and apostles today and prophetic people, all right? I'm trying not to lose track here. This is what it should look like. I will show thee things which must be here and after. So, in the prophet's mantle or the prophetic mantle of God's presence is that God wants to show you things that are going to take place here in this world and the present time and, and, and after and the time to come. You see, 
and he has that ability because the apostle, the prophet, has this mantle. He has a fullness because according to the scriptures, that not only the church founded on apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, is that we are connected to that cornerstone in a spiritual altitude that is so powerful. We are so close to his presence. They're almost like the elders in heaven in a way. We, have, we see John the Revelator had a connection with the elder in heaven revealing to him. That these are they which come out of great tribulation in Revelation, the sixth chapter. And the, I'm sorry, in the sixth seal, ending in the seventh chapter. So we see that there is a spiritual connection with prophets, elders, and people in heaven because you see that the Bible says that there is a great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us. Okay. So my point is this is that God will show prophets things here and after but if we but if we understand the declaration the model of of John the apostle here and the prophet he's both of those is that he is this is the word of God so if a prophet has a prophetic word of a present past tense or any kind of word of wisdom word of knowledge about the future about anything over your life it's going to be in consistent in connection with how strong and how much depth that word will determine on the revelation of God's word. In other words, a lot of prophets are long-winded, but they have no rhema. They have no revelation. Now, remember, it's the prophet Jesus. The Holy Spirit will not s step outside of the boundary of the revelation of Jesus to prophesy something outside of his presence. The Holy Spirit is only here to do one thing. Reveal Christ by the word and by the spirit and the word combined that out of that comes a blueprint out of that comes instruction out of that In other words, they're prophesying long-winded like they heard from Jesus from afar But really Jesus should be there in them and through them by the word Sitting at the feet of Jesus by the word Jesus is the only way to the father No man comes to the father but by me, but the word became flesh, right? So Jesus and the Word are one and the same. The Word was the Word, and the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And, the, and, he, and so we know that Jesus and the Word is one. So the Word of God is the portal to the presence of the Father at the feet of the throne, the, the feet of the Father at the throne, through the Word. So they're long-winded with their prophesying and saying all these f familiar statements that we've heard, what is common to man, when he is trying to speak something in a volume that isn't common to man, that isn't familiar out there, that doesn't have a lot of views, something that God can speak by the revelation of his word, that can pierce your inner man to a dimension of his presence you didn't think exists. Wow, there's Christ. I'm refreshing. I really feel Jesus. And now I really feel him speaking to me right now. When Jesus came on the scene and he prophesied and he healed and he touched people and they had an encounter with him. That's the same person today through men and women that you should know that when you're sitting at their feet, Jesus, I just, I just saw Jesus. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I saw Jesus in my bedroom. I saw Jesus in my prayer closet as a 12-year-old because that's, because, because that's how old I am in the spirit. But I just, I just came out of the presence of a 30-year-old man in the spirit. Are you seeing what I'm saying? The Bible says, how beautiful and pleasant it is for thy brethren to dwell in unity. It's like the beard of Aaron. It ran down the beard of Aaron onto the younger brother. That means the younger brother gets what the elder brother gets. The elder brother is Christ, the mature brother. You see, we think that we can come into the fullness all by ourselves. And this is the problem with a lot of apostles and prophets or a prophetic people or prophetess. They think that they have a ministry. Oh, Jesus. Because they felt something in their flesh that they think is, is, is equal to God. Oh, Jesus. That God is sending them now, and he isn't, when they should be submitting up under an apostle or a prophet until the appointed time of the Father. Now, let me show you something in the scriptures real quick. I'm going to back it up in the Holy Ghost, because I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want to show you something here, because if you don't have this example in your life, you are not looking like Christ or anything in the scriptures. And that's what we are to gauge our walk off of. We're going to go to the book of Galatians. I want to show you something in the book of Galatians, chapter 4. All right? Now, before I get into this, I want to show you something here, all right? This is very important because God's going to hold you accountable to this message on the day of judgment, you ministers out there. There are no independent contractors. God is coming back for a family of ministers that were faithful to a family of people before them. I'm talking about a spiritual family. There's so much backbiting, so much betrayal going on, so much hate going on, so much division. 
And we don't even address those things that are taking place. There's a spiritual demonic violence out there that we don't even want to touch in the eyes of the people. But that needs to be dealt with. All right. So the book of Galatians, you, get, you have a, the Galatian church got saved through the missionary of Paul and Paul the apostle. The ministry got saved by Jesus Christ, received the grace of Christ. And then after, the, after they got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, a couple days later, they experienced a spiritual warfare, a spiritual oppression, a demonic doctrine, a seducing spirit came in. Judaizers came in and said, hey, you're not saved by the law. I'm sorry, they said, you're not saved by this grace of Jesus. You're saved by the law and the works of Moses. Even Jesus was circumcised, and that's true, because Jesus became the law to fulfill the law. So my point is that, my point is that, so... They were bewitched. And Paul says, I marvel, in uh, Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, I marvel that you so soon removed from him that called you into Christ, into, into the gospel, into another which there be not another. So Paul's dealing with people no longer submitting up under the divine order of the elements of the fivefold ministry because they're listening to false prophets, false Christ, false ministry, another gospel. So and in verse 4, when you understand what I'm saying, you can understand the whole entire epistle of Galatians because he spends every chapter still hitting up dealing with the same thing. Because look at chapter 4. I, can, I, can, I, I don't have time to go through it and to prove that to you, but I'm, I'm going to skip to this. Revelation, chap Revelation. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that thou, that he is an heir as long as he is a child differeth nothing from his servant, though he be Lord of all. What that is saying is that an heir is a, an heir is a servant, otherwise he is, he is no different than his Lord, otherwise he's Lord of all. In other words, he is lifted up. He is the children of pride, okay? So if you understand that the, the situation back in those days, that they had slaves, uh, not in a you know, fashion that, that, that we have heard before, but they had had slaves to where when a Jew served in a vineyard or served a master or served somebody for so many X amount of years that they that there's an inheritance that they would get a piece of land or a, a wife or a, and we see that in the book of Genesis uh, uh, where, the, where the man of God served seven years plus another seven years for the right woman but my point is that and that's the mentality that he break mentality he's trying to use to shift the move in the spirit because it says this he's saying that uh, it's the same concept of the fivefold ministry. It's the same concept as it was seated in heavenly places in the body of Christ. Paul's trying to put that declaration out there that we are to submit to those, listen to the gospel. Verse 2 says, but it's under the tutors and governors until the appointed time of the Father. The tutors and governors is speaking of the church, okay, the fivefold ministry. You're under the tutors and governors of the church until the appointed time of the Father. Now, the Apostle Paul ain't preaching anything he's never preached himself or lived himself. Because, yeah, Paul started out preaching and prophesying, but he had a time of silence for six years when he went to the mountains of Arabia and by revelation and, and studied the promises and columns of Moses and got more revelation and came back. And he was found faithful at the church of Antioch in the book of Acts chapter 13 where he was found faithful called Saul, not even the Apostle Paul yet. He didn't shift over to his ministry yet. And the Bible says that he was found at the church of Antioch with prophets, not pastors. Oh, Jesus. Hello, pastors. Where's your apostles and prophets? Where are your founders before you that you are faithful to, who birthed out that good doctrine to you so you can preach? Come on now. So he's found there at the church of Antioch uh, with prophets, and they laid, the Holy Spirit said, and this was a fasting church because they were fasting. The Holy Spirit said, uh, separate me, Saul and Barnabas, for the work I called them. The word separate me in the Greek means chosen. He was called and found faithful for many years, but because he was faithful for many years, he became chosen. And now he was sent out, and they sent him out. They, sent, they laid hands and sent him out. He went from Saul to the Apostle Paul, and he began his ministry independently. Okay, all right. People who are sent by God as apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophetic speakers are people who are finally sent out. People who are nourished up in the words of faith. Because Paul said not to put a novice in office. In other words, that is before the appointed time. Oh, Jesus, the time of the Father. Under the tutors and governors until the appointed time of the Father. Oh, Jesus. Elisha was under Elijah until the appointed time of the Father. And then he was sent out with his devil portion. Okay, 
So my point is this, and Paul, and I'll back it up, man, I'll back it up. Let's go to verse 19. I say this a lot, but you know, there's newcomers coming. So uh, verse 19, Paul says, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. That is his presence, his glory. That is that Christ is formed in your character by the Spirit. That when you open up your words, when you open up your mouth and speak the gospel, your character is so grim with his presence that the anointing begins to follow your, your words because you are speaking God breath. According to the word of God, you are speaking the revelation and the mystery of God according to the scriptures, as you see me doing, breaking down with scriptures. Where are the where are the apostles and prophets that pray? Where are the apostles and prophets that have submit? Where are the prophetess, the women to, who have formed their gift in Christ and who are now able to speak something in us to lead us through something that they've already been through? Bible ministry brings the church into the full statue of Christ. You can't bring them if you ain't there yet. And you have too many people preaching, hooping, and hollering. Okay. And they'll even, I, I listened to one today, God bless her, you know. I'm not going to hoop, I'm not going to holler, I just want to teach this thing, talk up, I just want to, I'm not going to hoop, I'm not going to, he shut it up, I'm not going to speak in tongues, I'm not going to, and what did she do? She did all those things. Oh, Jesus. Prop, talking about your next destiny, your this, your that. All these things are true and factual, but you know, the most important thing God wants you to do as an enduring saint is this, okay? You are people that are not really, people who take upon that mantle themselves, that office themselves, and go forth in power. At least they think they're going forth in power. They're going forth in power in their own spirit. They're dishonoring Christ because it's not Christ prophesying. You have to be very submissive. and You know, the, this gospel is a gospel of humility and being, being humble about what you want to do. We want to do so much for Christ in our flesh, but we have yet many things to learn. Okay. So I want to show you something real quickly here uh, in Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5. Now, I'm saying this because I, I, I've been there. I've been discipled. And now I can make disciples. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Uh, there, are, there are prayer warriors that are assigned to my ministry who pray for the gospel because I'm preaching the gospel. Because we're preaching about it. The, there are people that are, are, are sent to help and to support that and, and to help spread the good news. And I thank you for doing that because it helps us. It helps us to get the gospel out there. It helps us to look out for our brothers and sisters and come against these demonic forces. For every high priest, now I want you to take, I want you to catch this because God has not dealt away with the order of the priesthood. Oh, Jesus. We like to use the milk understanding of, oh yeah, we're kings and priests, but we don't like to get dive into that and get a, a revelation and get an understanding that will keep us submissive until the point of time of the Father so that we can be used in a greater authority by the Spirit of God. Okay. All right. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men and the things pertaining to God. This is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. Now, I want you to catch this. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, I'll do you a favor in case you can't see this. Bear with me for a minute. I don't know why it's not highlighting all of this. Okay. I'm going to make it bigger for you, so just bear with me here. Oh, my computer's really fast, so... So, all right, and I keep it here so you can see the camera still. All right, it says, now, man, submission ain't easy, man. People want to be comfortable. People want to, you know, they just have this independent mentality with Christ. And people don't understand how the Spirit moves in my life the way it does. Well, I'm going to show you. I was just like everyone else watching, all right? This is how you get there. This is how you get that, that fullness to flow in your life. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1, for every high priest, see, I, I, this, is, this is New Testament, okay, New Testament, so he's talking about the, you know, the fivefold ministry, he's talking about ministry here, for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in the, in the things pertaining to God, that we might both offer gifts and sacrifices for sins, mm. 
Why would he say that in the New Testament? Verse 2, who can have compensation and, uh, on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassionate with infirmity? Okay. Verse 5, talking about Jesus, and by reason whereof he ought as for the people as also for himself to offer for sins, and no man taketh this honor unto himself. Okay, but he that is called of God as was Aaron. I want you to catch this because I know there's some principles that have been dealt away. There, there's an example here he's trying to tell us here. Of course, we don't we don't atone for sins. Jesus does. But how many know that we carry the fullness with us? Some of us that are walking in that way, we can intercede for people and restore them back to God by the Spirit through intercession. And no man take. I want you to catch this. Up. Verse 3, and by reason whereof, okay, okay, verse 4, and no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as was Aaron, and also Christ, now I want you to catch this verse 5 statement here, this is Jesus, he also, Christ, glorified not himself to be made a high priest, also Christ, I'm sorry, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made high priest. In other words, Christ didn't go about his physical fleshly way according to the ways of man or according to his own will, according to his own ability to lift himself up on any kind of pedestal or platform because then he would have bypassed John the Baptist altogether. He would have said, John, I'm just as deep as you. In fact, I'm deeper than you. Okay. <laughs> Jesus did not identify with any, any man according to the flesh, but after the Spirit. And showed us the example. Oh, we like to look at the baptism of water, but we don't like to look at everything in that picture that symbolizes something. So also Christ glorified not himself to be, be, be made high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Remember when Jesus was being baptized in the river Jordan. Soon as, soon as Jesus submitted up under a man who was of priestly de a descendant because his father was a priest. See, you can connect John the Baptist with his father. I can't think of his name right now. Forgive me. Uh, I, it's floating. I can feel it. His father was connected to the priests, priests that are found faithful amongst other priests. And it goes all the way back to the Old Testament. Uh, they were, they're all connected all the way to Melchizedek, which I believe Melchizedek was Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, but that's a whole other teaching. I can, I can back it up, too. I can prove to you. Okay. So when uh, John laid hands on Jesus and baptized him, <laughs> all, them, all those, uh, those priests before, <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> No, we like to see, I just seen a vision of, uh, you know, how we, a bunch of people get together and they lay hands on someone and they pray. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone, okay? Every prophet put their hands on Jesus. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. When a when prophet Douglas put his hands on me, <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. For a minute. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm trying to show you something here. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son. Okay, when John the Baptist was baptized in Jesus, the Spirit of God came down in the form of a dove and descended, or I'm sorry, as a dove, King James says as a dove, and descended upon Jesus and remained upon him. And the Father said, this is my Son whom I am well pleased. Uh, uh, verse 6, I'm, I'm going some more with this. Verse 6, as he said in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Why? Because of the submission. When the Father saw Jesus submit up under the right person, the Holy Spirit was able to mimic Jesus and do the same thing and submit up to Jesus. Because there was a divine order of priests. Jesus needed John the Baptist for the transfer of the priesthood. I don't care. You might have already been baptized in the Holy Ghost. But there's someone, there's a John the Baptist out there for you that when you get around, hello, apostles and prophetess, if you want to be prophetess, there's somebody out there in your walk of life of influence that when you get around them, you feel heaven open in a way you've never felt it before because that dove is trying to come and rest and form your ministry, prepare you the way of the Lord. John the Baptist was sent, what, to prepare the way of the Lord. Five, thank you, Holy Ghost. Fivefold ministers are called by God to prepare the way of the Lord on your life. 
make a clear path for the Lord, make a highway for the Lord. They come to groom, teach, exhort, rebuke, correct, train, make a disciple out of you. Okay? And you want to go out there independently and try to make disciples, and you will, you've you never sat at a master's feet yourself. Oh, Jesus. Calling yourself prophetess, shouting and hollering and all that crazy noise. Ain't got nothing in the spirit. Really, sounds good. There's some good principles there, but you're not really aiding the people through the through the through the valley of the shadow of death. You're not really confirming and speaking to their course of nature with God. You're not really speaking to their situation and, and, and stirring them up to keep believing. You're not really leading them to that next dimension of his presence. So, oh, Jesus, you're not there yourself. Okay. Put what you think you got down. Go back to the prayer closet and submit until the appointed time of the Father. Stay faithful to your pastor if you got one. I hope he's got the Holy Ghost. I hope he's got apostolic prophetic foundation. If you got a good church, you better hang on to it. You better pray for that pastor. Because, because what I'm talking about is wrapped up in him for you. Okay, I don't know who I'm talking to. Okay, I don't know what, a, what apostle, what prophet, whoever it is God has for you. Okay. It's all about serving each other, one another, in the fear of the Lord. Hey, I'm not saying that you need to have an armor bearer here and you need to have boys over here, boys doing this for you, guys doing that for you, girls, people uh, running around for you and serving you like you're building some empire. No, this isn't a, 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 we might be coming together physically, but this is a spiritual ordinance. Okay. Well, let's get that armor bearer, armor bearer talk out of the way. That's foolishness. Okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm saying who are those that, can bring about the feats of Jesus in a way we've never seen them. And the, Jesus felt the spirit of his heavenly father like he did from all of eternity. And the way he hadn't felt it in a long time when he got around John the Baptist. To where the devil came. Oh, Jesus. The devil came and tempted him and tried him. The person that God has placed in your life to mentor you, help you, feed you, form you, confirm things in Christ, and for you to serve and be faithful to through and, and, and serving an apostle or a prophet or a faithful ministry isn't just carrying your suitcase or briefcase. But because remember, the one who was the greatest in the kingdom was Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. Well, Martha was too busy running around trying to prepare the meal, trying to impress Jesus in the church. Trying to do all this, trying to impress him, instead of sitting at the feet of Jesus. See, she was she was serving Christ, doing more service to Christ. Mary was doing more service to Christ, sitting at his feet, being being submissive and listening to everything he had to say. That was her service to God. Be still. I know that I'm God. Our greatest service to God is being still and knowing the shepherds of the faith, the, the true voice of the shepherds. Okay. There are many great sounding preachers out there, but there'll be something a little different. Not a little different, but there'll be something majorly different about a true prophet. Okay. So, so because in, in the realm of submission, in the realm of submission in verse 8, it's very hard. Like I said, the devil came to tempt Jesus for 40 days. After he was baptized by John the Baptist, he was led in the spirit. Now, I want you to catch this. He was led with that priestly mantle that he received when he became a priest. He was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But the Bible says that after the temptation that he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. He came in by virtue of the Spirit, but he came out with greater power and authority. What am I saying? That when you find your job, the Baptist, when you find your mentor, thank you, Holy Ghost, when you find the, 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 the true covering that God has to birth you out in the Spirit, to help you, confirm you, to help you in the ways of God. That you're no more like a that you're no more like a child tossed by every false winter way of doctrine, where, where people like these that I'm talking about can lay and de deceive and distract you. You no longer can be deceived. If I give you a, a fake Big Mac, you know what are you know it's fake because you had the real thing long enough. So, 
But the devil came to try Jesus. What am I saying? That when you find your John the Baptist, when you find your mentor, when you find your apostle, the devil will come and target the unity. He will try to make you offended at that brother. He will, he will attack the unity of that fellowship greater than anyone else. In other words, you will feel not only the dimension of the presence of God's power like you've never felt before when you get around this brother or sister, but you will also feel the attacks that they go through. Oh, Jesus. Not only when to have authority, you got to be under authority. When you submit up under that authority, how much more am I in the midst? To have authority, you got to be under authority. The authority and the anointing that's on their life will, come, will rest upon your life to serve. And to minister under that, remember, this is Jesus Christ. This is not the man. It's just the vessel of the person that he is using, that we honor. If you receive a prophet in the name of our prophet, you get the prophet's reward. And the Bible says, according to the fivefold ministry, it is the fullness of Christ. Mm. So the devil knows if he can get people to dishonor that man or woman of God, disrespect Put your mouth disrespectfully on that apostle or a prophet. you be disqualified and dismiss from the call. See to it that no man gets your crown. Verse 8. Though he were a son, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. We think we're obedience when we haven't even suffered. Boy, your flesh don't want to submit. There is no independent anointing. There is no general anointing. It must flow from the head down, and those that are faithful to it will come into their ministry. That is the order of God, and I can back it up in the scripture. And, and being perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. I want to show you something. Look, because look, the principle still keeps repeating itself. I want you to catch this in verse 12. For when a time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Now the word oracle is another word for prophet. This is the principle of the prophet. Oh, Jesus. The prophet Jesus. Because it says the oracle of God. And are become as has such need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Too many of you prophetess out there are called, but you're too unskillful. You're trying to go ahead of the Father. And you don't, because a lot of you will say, well, Vinny, you just have the gift. That, that, that's, just, that's just your gift. I was just like you. I didn't have this gift. I couldn't operate like this with the spirit and the atmosphere moving upon me, as you see now. But I was convinced as Elisha. Elisha said, if it worked for Elijah, it will work for me. If you want it bad enough, if you want the mantle of Christ bad enough, you will submit until the appointed time of the Father and show your humility to the throne of God that you submit and support the mantle that was passed down from Moses. The mantle that was passed down from Jesus to the 12 apostles. From, from the 12 apostles to, 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 to uh, 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 the apostle Paul. Uh, all the way down to our time. I believe I'm walking in one of them. Okay. Verse 15. Yeah, many of you are unskillful in the word of righteousness. You do not have the sound doctrine of the meat of the word of God. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Full age. This is a spiritual character of somebody who is coming into the fullness of Christ. According to character and doctrine. They got their notepad out. Every time they hear a video like this, they got scriptures. They're writing it down. They're studying it. They're doing word searches off of it. The Bible says that when they heard Paul preach, they went back to study to see if those things were so in the scriptures. There's an anointing that rests upon them that pressed them to the prayer closet. That pressed them in the scriptures. I can't tell you how many times when people hear me preach, man, you make me want to read my Bible more. Because there's an anointing that when you come under the covering of that anointing, it will rest upon you. That's what the Bible means when it says in the last days, you shall profit. I will pour out my spirit. Not, not pour down my spirit. We know it comes down, but it needs a vessel. Heaven is connected through people by Christ and the spirit. I'll pour out my spirit and your, it'll blanket over your people and they shall prophesy. Your spiritual sons and daughters shall prophesy. The Bible says, I'm going to come back to this. The Bible says that when King Saul sent messengers to inquire of David's life, the Bible words, and you can Google this or look, or look it up in the Bible, 
It says that they found King Saul standing. They found David standing, not King Saul. They found David standing in the company of, of the prophets. And the Bible says word for word, as Samuel, the prophet, appointed over them. The word appointed means this. In the Greek, it means set. And it's funny. He was a set prophet of the house of God. That the Bible says that God set in the church apostles, prophets. He's not setting men to do it by his spirit. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. Who can build my house, saith the Lord? These are men who have mastered the yielding of the spirit and who can usher, uh, want to put a thousand to flight, two, ten thousand men. They can, they, 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 what happened was they were standing in the company. He was, David was standing in the company of the prophets as Samuel appointed over them. The spirit of Samuel began to rest upon them and they began to prophesy. There's two that gathered in my name. That, that, that when finally, I'm sorry, forgive me, that the spirit began to rest upon the messengers and their eyes were opened that they did not report back to Saul. And that happened three times and finally Saul went himself. And the spirit of God came upon Saul and he began to prophesy. Okay, what am I saying? Okay, I'll back it up with more scriptures. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible says this, that when Moses could not bear, bear the burden of the people, Oh, Jesus. Moses could not bear the burden of the people. God said, the anointing and the presence of God was so great on Moses. God said, bring 71 elders up here. I will come down and take the anointing upon your spirit. You find this word for word in the book of Numbers. The anointing of your spirit, and I will put it upon the 71 elders. And the Bible says that when he did that, that the, the, two, the elders went out in the camp and they were able to prophesy. Oh, Jesus. So now you have seven. You want from one, one Moses to 70 Moses. Hello to the 70 followers of Jesus that betrayed him. Oh, Jesus. Left with only 12. Very few laborers. Okay. All right. All right. What, whose tribe are you from? Oh, Jesus. God is coming back for a kingdom that is faithful and love and service and submit one to another. Submit ye one to another in the fear of the Lord by all this all this man will know that you are my disciple if you have a love for one another. Okay. There's a lot of betrayal going on here. God is coming back for a gospel of submission, a church of love, a people that serve and faithful to one another, support one another, pray for one another, love one another. Oh, Jesus. I see the body of Christ. I see the influence that God has placed around me. I see it in some of y'all's lives too. Be faithful. Be obedient. Pray for that person because you need them and they need you so they can keep hanging on to what they got because you need what they got. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Christ ain't going to do it no other way. No other way. If I or an angel preach any other gospel, if I come back and I change this gospel to another gospel, I, it, will, it will be a cursed man. Okay. I don't preach the law of works. I preach the law of faith, deliverance, and submission and humility. Okay. Let's go back to verse, verse 14. But strong meat belonging to them that are of full age. Okay. Jesus Christ comes to us in the volume of the character of someone to the degree of somebody is waxed in. We don't fully understand what a representative of Christ is. We, we always want to do, we have this independent mentality that is so dangerous that we think we can do stuff for Christ. We think we can do stuff for God. We can't do nothing for God, but by the Spirit of God that dwells in us and leads and guides us. The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Those are the true sons of God, the Bible says. So strong meat belongs to them that are full age, the meat of the revelation of God's word, the manna from heaven. To those who overcome, Jesus says, I will give you the hidden manna. I will show you the mysteries of the good stewards of the word of God to the good stewards of the word of God. Be found faithful, and you will be given much. Okay? So, the full-grown Christ Jesus. How old is your pastor in the spirit? How old is your bishop in the spirit? How old is your evangelist in the spirit? Are they sent by God? The Bible says that there's a man, that, John the Baptist, there was a man named John, sent from God. Either you're going to be sent in your own authority or God's authority. Be careful what you preach and how you preach. Be careful what foundation that you're laying in other people's lives when you speak. 
because you're going to be rewarded, whether or not it's gold, silver, precious stone, the meat of God's word, or is it wood, hay, straw, and stubble? Okay, the fire of God has already came to test and to burn up your works already. You will be rewarded in the light of what you're faithful to. Okay, you will be rewarded. And, and see, the beauty of these ministers is that they help form Christ in our lives. They help labor so that we can form what they have, so that we can discover our identity, our gifts, and our talents. Because the person you are when you're born again is not going to be the final glory of who you're going to become. Okay. Moses thought he knew who he was. Moses, the book of Acts says that Moses tried to convince the children of Israel that he was going to deliver them by the power of his own hand and killing the Egyptian, and they didn't believe him. So he went to them, so he went, uh, most people don't know this, Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness before the children of Israel with that additional 40. We know he spent 40 years in the wilderness with the children of Israel, but he was already there 40 years before that, for 40 years with Jethro, the priest. Oh, Jesus. There goes that priest statement again. And his four daughters. Where he learned, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit. And then one day God told, after he just started discovering his gifts and his talents, hello, somebody. One day God spoke to him and said, now go to the house of Pharaoh. Okay. And he went in the Spirit, but he couldn't do it before. What am I saying? Put down what you think you have in the Spirit. Find somebody. Find out who it is that God has sent to you. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's somebody else. I don't know. I don't know who that somebody else is. You should know who your John the Baptist is. Okay? I don't know. I, I don't know. There could be more than one. There could be. Okay? But I know one thing. How many prophets came to anoint King Saul to be king? How many prophets came to anoint King Saul to be king? Confirm his mantle before he rebelled. How many? One, one, one shot. Had Benny Hinn would have missed Catherine Coleman, oh Jesus. <laughs> he would have never submitted the thunder. You know, I, I, I did some research on that. And I, I'm talking about the old school Benny Hinn that I came up with. And I love Benny Hinn and I pray for him. And we need to pray for him. But Benny Hinn was serving at the, uh, serving at, uh, Catherine Coleman's ministry for many years. He got behind the pulpit. Her pulpit where the, the same thing started happening when he preached. Miracles started taking place like Catherine Coleman. <laughs> they, called him, they called him little Coleman for the longest time. But God said, I've sent you, you know, to have your own independent ministry now. And uh, we know he started in Orlando. And miracles and healing took place on that ministry. But it, that, that was his Elisha. Now, she wasn't an apostle. She was a healing evangelist. Okay. I got a whole teaching on that. I can break that down. That there are two type of people who carry the ministry of miracles and signs and wonders. Apostles and prophets, but mainly apostles, more than the prophet. And evangelists. Okay, Why? Evangelists to evangelize. Why are they equal in miracles and signs and wonders as the apostle? Why? Because the gospel has, the true gospel has to be preached with miracles and signs and wonders. Well, Vinny, we don't go after signs and wonders. I didn't say that. Okay, signs and wonders follow those that preach the true word of God. In other words, Jesus is the only one who can speak. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can speak. Is Jesus with you? And if he's there, he's doing the same thing he did 2,000 years ago, healing folks, touching folks. Okay, and so it's just common sense to me. To me it is. Okay, so I want you guys to be found faithful where God has called you and your gifts and your talents. The Bible says that God has placed the people of God in the body of Christ where he, he puts them. All right. So you will, the Bible says in the courts of our God, you shall flourish on the day of judgment. Okay. So I want to show you something real quick because, you know, um, some of you, I, 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 this is nothing new that I haven't preached before, but uh, seated in the house of God. Let me see if I can find that seated. Um, and I got to get out of here. Not really. I mean, I can hang out for a little while, but. Uh, um, I got a few minutes here. Let's go to Psalms. I think it's Psalm 92. Verse 13, maybe. Okay. Okay. Now, I, I believe this is a spiritual house, and I can back that up. I'll go there next. 
those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. According to the book of the book of Corinthians, it talks about the you know the, the body of Christ is divided up according to you know when you get in the Corinth. I'm really feeling the spirit when we get in the Corinthians and it talks about the nine gifts of the spirit. If you keep reading, it talks about the arm can't say to the leg, I don't need you. It talks about the different members. So he's talking about, of course, the arm. Are, the arm is people, you know, but he doesn't. Rem I, I just I just caught this in the spirit. I just heard this in the spirit that that. It's funny how he talks about these nine different gifts. One is given this gift, one is given that gift to edify each other. But then he starts going into a, a, a body parts that, that, that those people are, 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 are the body of that one body. The body parts of that one body is individual people, but it's according to that gift. Okay, you're, you, to find out if you're a leg, you need to find out what gift you have. Okay, to find out if you're an arm, you need to find out what gift you have. You know, it, it, just, it just reminds me of something that these prophets, the apostles claim these offices, they're out there preaching and prophesying and speaking in tongues really loud, you know, uh, and it is not, it'd be, it'd be different if they spoke in tongues and gave you the interpretation. Because the Bible says that when Paul laid hands on folks, not only was their identity confirmed, their gifts and callings, but when he laid hands on folks and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 19, the Bible says that when he laid hands on them, they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. They didn't say or prophesied. They spoke in tongues and prophesied the interpretation of that tongue. Okay. So what am I saying? When they did that, they were prophesying the mysteries of God. Not talking about how great you're going to be doing and how blessed you are and this is your time and and da 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 and this and that. Now there are some young prophetess out there that are you know learning and coming around, but you but 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 just 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 don't get too far ahead of yourself. Master every word by the Spirit and when it's the Spirit, and yeah, encourage people be positive in your message, but don't be too long winded outside of revelation in your spirit. Get impregnated with the Word of God. Get that Word down deep in you to where it becomes you. So when you open up your mouth, it just comes to you, even if you've said it before, but it comes back to you in a fresh new way that you get other scriptures that you spoke that you never really spoke before. Because I spoke some stuff today, right now, in a way that I hadn't spoke before, even though I've preached this message so many times. Okay, that I'm connected to that throne of Jesus, the Apostle Jesus, the mantle of Jesus Christ. Okay, so... Uh, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. We like to think inner courts, outer courts. Oh, look at me. I'm glorious. No, no. Court is talking about on the day of judgment. <laughs> Why? Because you were faithful with the gifts and the talents. You didn't bear your talent. You were faithful with your gift and talent that you grew in it. You grew. Remember, remember, remember the parable of the talents. The ones that were faithful with two was given four. The one that was faithful with five was given ten. In other words, they increased in grace. They increased in their gift. They grew and came into the fullness that they were able to preach in an even more greater abundance of the people. Jesus was able to feed the 4,000. I'm sorry, the, the, the 5,000. He was able to, with just two pieces of loaf, okay, so your grace will make room for you because if you're in the right place. I, I was looking for a church building. I found out that my church building was here <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> the devil has allowed these pastors to shut us out so that we can't discover our gifts and talents to the foundation of apostles and prophets. When you're listening to a true apostle or prophet, you will see the fullness of Christ standing before you, and it's in that mirror that beholding in that glass, that mirror, that you behold them from glory to glory to Christ before in you. You discover your identity. You discover who you are in Christ through the people of God around you. I want you to catch this. The devil knows if I can get him to get offended, if I can get him to take something the wrong way. Because let me tell you something. They might be heavily anointed, but they are still human too. They still have things that they got to get under control. You're still going to see some flesh in their lives. All right. I love you guys. God bless you. Like and subscribe and submit until the appointed time of the Father, until the Spirit breathes upon you and you feel that strong dimension of the anointing on your life without them being present anymore. Okay. You can fast and pray all you want. He won't show up. He'll show up.
but not until you labor to come into that fullness. And then when it's time, he'll remove that mentor and that grace and that anointing will be fully formed on your life. You'll be serving in the church. You'll be serving under that covering. That's the way God ordained it. The Bible says that the head of Christ is God the Father and the head of Christ is the man. The head of the man is a woman. That's talking about a order in the spirit. If you go back and you read that chapter in 2 Corinthians, it's not talking about husband and wife, even though it's the same principle. Go back and read that again. I'm going to do a video on that, breaking that down too. Okay, because women can preach, but they have to submit, just like men. Men are in the same boat. Nobody's greater than the other. And the spirit, by the spirit they are, but that's Christ. Remember, it's Christ that's formed on people that we are to follow submit to and pray for and be found faithful and love to serving one another, loving each other, supporting that people, not putting them up on a pedestal. God's already exalted them in the spirit. But they act like they're not because they're trying to stay humble. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Love you guys. God bless. Me and my wife are praying for you. Like and subscribe. Share these videos.